Okay. So the recording started, so everything that I say from here on out is going to be on the recording, which I'm going to po post to my academic YouTube channel, okay? So word of warning, uh, if you ask a question in class, it will show up on the audio. So if you don't want it to be recorded and seen by your peers, then you can ask me after class, or you can ask me during office hours, or you can come to the MTC, or you can email me. There's a million ways that you can ask questions if you don't want it to be on the recording. That said, hi, go ahead, take a seat. Sorry. Oh, hi. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, Aaron, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead and take a seat there in the front, and I'll add you to the seating chart. Uh, we can just talk after class about SI stuff. Okay, so back to the syllabus. Um, where was I? We we're recording, and uh, anything that we talk about in class today is going to get posted on YouTube. So if you didn't quite understand something during class, uh, you can go back and watch the recording, or if you are studying for the final and you find that you don't know much about continuity, then you can go back to the section on continuity and watch that video. So everything's being recorded. Um, yeah, and let's just go ahead and get right into it. Okay, so uh, my name is Thomas Homery. Uh, I'm a second year graduate student here in the math department, which means that I'm trying to get my PhD right now. I don't have my PhD yet, so uh, you don't need to call me Professor Homery or Mr. Homery. You can just call me Tom or Thomas, whichever one floats your boat. I'm okay with either. Uh, just not Tommy. I don't really do Tommy. There, plus, there's another Tommy in the math department. It would get confusing. So uh, this is my email here in the top right. Okay, that's how you're going to contact me if you ever need to contact me outside of class. Don't try to find my phone number or anything of that nature or hit me up on my DMs on Instagram or anything. Use my email and uh, you can ask me questions through that anytime, etc., etc. My office is 314A. Uh, I'm never going to be there, so if you show up, I'm probably not going to be in there. The only time that I might be in there is today on Fridays because I have like a tutoring thing online, but I'll be busy with that, so I won't be able to really help you. If you need to reach me, you need to come to my virtual office hours, which are Monday at 12 p.m. for now. That's subject to change, uh, but that's probably when they're going to be. So I'll have a link on uh, Blackboard that you guys just click the link and I'll set you up into like a multi-person Skype Zoom type thing and uh, you guys can ask me questions there. Um, okay, my math tutoring center hours, those are my other office hours. Like I said, they're Friday from 11 to 1 and uh, they're actually not in LeConte 105 anymore. They are online. Uh, and I will post the link to the Math Tutoring Center online room on Blackboard, and you can click it at any time that the Math Tutoring Center is open, and you can get connected with some graduate student. It might not be me, uh, although if you connect at this time on this day, it probably will be me. Um, so that's a super useful resource for getting help if you're confused about something, or if you're falling behind, or if you're just studying. Um, have I covered all that stuff? Okay, so the SI is Aaron Murray. You want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi guys, my name is Aaron. I'm a sophomore here, sport management major. I took Math 122 first semester freshman year, got an A, which I applied to be an SI. So I'm going to be here taking notes. Um, and then three times a week, uh, they're going to be on Sundays, Tuesdays, Thursdays. I'm going to be holding virtual SI sessions where I'll be going over stuff with you guys. So if you ever need help, and then also test review sessions. Uh, is this going to be an online meeting yeah, or in person? Yeah, it's all online through Blackboard Collaborate, and I'm going to make um, meeting rooms through like the Blackboard page um, that he has set up. So. Okay. Uh, so for those of you who might not know, uh, an SI is a supplemental instructor who did well in the class last semester, 
So they're a great point of contact for a peer if you need some peerly advice on how to study or if you need some help getting connected to resources, then Erin can help you with that. And she'll also hold um, these meetings, for, which are kind of like study groups, and she'll help lead those so that they can be like as productive as possible. Have I pretty much summed it up? Yeah. Okay, uh, so her email is listed right here. That's another important contact. If you need to get in touch with her about those ses sessions, then shoot her an email. Uh, what time on Sunday, Tuesday, yeah. Thursday, do you know? On Sunday, they're 8 to 8.50 p.m. Tuesday, 4 to 4.50. Thursday, 4 to 4.50. And I'm going to send out an email to you guys um, with the meeting times later also. And then send out reminder emails too. Come OK, does anybody have any questions for Aaron about SI stuff? OK, then we will move on. Okay, so this syllabus is subject to change. Uh, so first of all, it's subject to change for the next few days because I don't have to turn it in until August 26th and I'm a last minute kind of guy. So if I have to make changes, uh, I will make changes. Hello, you can come in and take a seat right here or there if you want. Um, let me go back and add you to the seating chart. Can you tell me your name? Christopher Turner. How's it spelled? C H R C H R R S T O P A C R Turner. Are you sitting? Okay, hang on a second. Chris. Chris Turner. Chris Turner. Okay. Got it. Sorry, it's just kind of hard to hear with the masks. Okay, got you added. All right, so yeah, I might change it uh, over the next few days, uh, including based off of input that I'm going to solicit from you guys today. Uh, so if you guys see something in the syllabus that you feel like, oh, I'm not sure that's quite right, or if you see something that needs to be added to the syllabus, please let me know, and I will type it down, and I will consider adding it or removing it, et cetera. Yes, your name? Oh, uh, are you ready? Yes, are you in a desk right now? No, I came a little late. I didn't want to you, can come up, you can come up here and sit here. Or you can sit there if you want. OK, so uh, yeah, it might change, basically, is, is what that says. Uh, so prerequisites, you need to have gotten a C or better in 111, 111i, or 115, or passed the math placement test to get placed into this class. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have all done that, because otherwise it won't let you into the class. Um, let's see here. Learning outcomes. OK, so. You should be able to do some of these things. Uh, I'm going to leave these to be read by you. Uh, basically, they're just the academic outcomes that we're trying to uh, foggy mask uh, achieve in this class. OK, the textbook. This is kind of important. Um, so you need to sign up for Wiley Plus, okay? If you sign up for Wiley Plus, the cheapest option includes an online access to the textbook, okay? So whatever the bookstore tells you, you don't need to buy or rent a physical copy of the book. You can if you want. It'll probably be expensive and unnecessary because I will probably never ask you to read from the book or do problems from the book everything will be on Wiley Plus. So just pay your $69 troll toll and get the Wiley Plus subscription because you're going to have to have it to do your homework for the semester. Uh, what's your name again? Uh, Shri Reddy. It's full name Godzilla. Sorry, Shri Reddy. What do you go by? Shri, S-R-I. S-R-I. Last name? R-E-D-Y. D-Y? D-Y, yeah, E-D-Y. Okay. E-D-Y. Okay. All right, uh, you need to have a calculator. It needs to be a TI-84 or a TI-83. There are no other substitutes for these calculators, okay? If you have a TI-89, that's actually strictly forbidden. TI-Inspire, CAS, or whatever. All the ones that'll solve 
things for you in like a Wolfram Alpha type way you're not allowed to have. Okay, and you have to have a face covering, okay? You need to wear a face covering at all times in the classroom, in my office, and in any other face-to-face -face meeting place. Okay, that's not coming from me, that is the university, and I will be abiding by the university rules. So, um, gosh, this is really long. Okay, basically, you're all good so far because you all wore a mask to class today. Uh, you need to wear it for the duration of the class. Um, unfortunately, that includes if you want to eat or drink. So if you want to eat or drink, the university says you need to leave the classroom and go to somewhere where you can be 10 feet away from other people in order to take off your mask and take, take a sip of water or whatever. That said, uh, you know, if you have like a beverage with a straw or something like that and you can wedge it underneath your mask, like I'm not going to be mad about that. But, you know, what I don't want to see is people, you know, full on removing their masks and taking water or et cetera. OK, so that's super annoying. And it's believe me, it's more annoying for me than it is for you guys, because I get super thirsty when I'm talking for like 75 minutes straight. Uh, but that's what we have to deal with this semester. So. Uh, from here on out, each student is expected to sanitize their desk at the start of class. Okay, so when you come into class, grab one of those paper towels, spritz it down with some stuff, wipe your desk, that's it. A uh, seating chart has been established already, uh, so the seat that you're in today, you need to go back to that seat next time. For the first few classes, I'll put up the seating chart on the screen so that you guys can see it and figure out where you need to sit. Uh, desks have been physically distanced. Don't move them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you need to abide by the quarantine practices set in place by the university. That means that if you've been exposed to somebody who's tested positive for the virus or has shown symptoms for the virus, you need to self-isolate for 14 days. And you need to call this number here, okay? This is like your COVID number for if you have any questions or any concerns about COVID-19, this is the number to call. This is also where you report if you're feeling unwell or et, et cetera, that sort of thing, or if you've come into contact with anybody who's feeling unwell. Did I get all of that stuff? Let's take a break for a second and ask, does anybody have any questions about what I covered so far for COVID? There's more to come, but so far? Does anybody have any comments? Yes. Will you be posting the syllabus online? Or is it yes, on? this is already on Blackboard, and I'm going to post the updated version. I think the version that's on there right now isn't quite up to date, so I'll, I'll get it up to date as soon as possible. OK. Let's move on. Okay, if you have symptoms like cough, fever, shortness of breath, or have had close contact with someone that has been diagnosed with COVID-19, call that number and they'll tell you exactly what to do and how to get tested and all that stuff, okay? Let's see here. Um, I already covered eating and drinking. Oh yeah, the exception to the eating and drinking rule. Um, if you are diabetic or something and you need to have food or drink and it's critically important that you have it during class, you can register with SDRC um, and they can figure out some kind of solution for you. And it might be like wearing a face shield or something instead of like a mask. I think they can do that for people if you have asthma or, or something like that, they're the people to talk to if you have some kind of exception that you need for the face covering rule. Okay, lastly, COVID and mental health. Okay, I get, I seriously get that this is like the least ideal possible situation for college students to be in. And I think, who here is a freshman? Raise your hand if you're a freshman. Okay, so we have a lot of people who are having first time at the university and you've sort of been robbed of the traditional experience and that freaking sucks because you should be able to just run around and party like crazy and do whatever the heck you want but we're stuck in this really unfortunate 
situation. And I feel for you guys. And that can have a toll on your mental health, okay? Uh, academic environment is already high pressure and it can cause anxiety and depression in just about anybody. Lord knows it's caused them in me. So if you're struggling with those sorts of things because of COVID or otherwise, I would invite you to please come talk to me. Um, if you don't feel comfortable talking to me, then you can go and talk to the counseling and psychiatry people. They are super helpful. And I believe you can get like 10 free counseling sessions per academic year. Uh, and they are like the best people ever. They'll help you with anything that you need help with. Um, okay, that's all I have to say about that. So let's talk about attendance. You do not have to come to class. Uh, I've intentionally created this policy and worked very hard on setting up a way that you can view the lectures at home in a way that's nearly identical to what you get in the classroom. Uh, so you don't have to come to class. If you want to stay home and just watch the lecture online, you are more than welcome to do so. That said, this class is scheduled to be in person. A lot of people have mentioned on their Blackboard thing that they really dig the in-person thing. You always are welcome to come to the physical classroom and participate in class in the physical space. If you learn better that way, then I encourage you to do that. That said, if you're ever feeling unwell, please stay home, please watch the video. If you don't feel like coming, please stay home, watch the video. That's perfectly fine, okay? Any questions about the attendance policy? Okay, I will be measuring your viewership of the lecture, okay? So if you come to class, you have viewed the lecture. You were in person in class. If you watch the video online, you have viewed the lecture, okay? The way I'm going to measure whether you have viewed the video is by having you complete an exit slip. So there will be a little form on Blackboard. It'll ask you like three questions like, what did we learn today? What was one thing that was hard? What was one thing that was easy? Done. Okay, you just go to Blackboard, fill that out within like a week of watching the lecture, and you're good to go. Okay, participation is expected for all students. Participate how you want to participate. If you want to participate from home by watching the videos, emailing me your questions, whatever, totally fine. If you want to participate in person, that's also fine. Cell phones, if you're in the physical classroom, please don't use your cell phone. Laptops, uh, they're not allowed in the classroom unless you have registered yourself with the SDRC for having a need of a laptop. Uh, sorry, I'm Pete. <laughs> um, so if you need to use a laptop, contact the SDRC or come see me personally and we'll talk it over, okay? If you really like to take notes that way, I'm open to allowing you to do that, but it's not exactly friendly for most of mathematics. Smartwatches and other devices. Uh, this isn't really a big deal, but if you have a... This is more of a big deal when we have in-person assessments, which we won't be having this semester. Uh, but uh, don't use your smartwatch to cheat, basically, is what that says. Uh, academic integrity. I expect you to familiarize yourself and behave according to the University Code of Conte Conduct, the University Honor Code, and the Carolinian Creed. Cheating is not going to help you pass this class. I have intentionally designed the exams to be very unfriendly to cheating and I check online if I see my questions posted on Chegg. So please don't cheat. It's not good for anybody. If I catch somebody cheating, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to send it straight over to the people who deal with the cheating, and that's the student conduct office, and the, your fate will be in their hands, okay? I'm not going to deal with it. Students with disabilities. Um, okay, if you have additional accommodations, so you have extra time on an exam or uh, assessments of that nature, um, you need to register with the SDRC and make an appointment with me to talk to me about it just so that I have 
a good idea of what you need from me because uh, I want to make sure that I'm providing equal access to everybody in the class. So if you have uh, an SDRC registered disability and you need extra time or something like that, please come talk to me. Or if you need a, like a closed captionings on the videos also, uh, let me know. I think YouTube is going to do it automatically for me, but I can't be certain of that. Uh, studying. Okay, you need to study outside of class. Uh, this was a huge wake-up call for me when I first started university I was like, oh my god instead of being in class for like eight hours a day. I'm in class for like two hours a day It's like so much easier. Well, I didn't do so well that semester <laughs> and uh, It turns out that you do need to study outside of class. Okay, uh, especially with this class. This is something that's pretty hard material and the way that you're gonna get good at math is gonna be by practicing on your own. Um, unfortunately, uh, as convenient as it would be, watching someone else do math makes you as good at math as watching someone play tennis makes you good at tennis. Uh, you have to actually go out and hit the balls, right, if you wanna get good at tennis. So, no matter how much I watch Federer play, I'm not gonna play like Federer, sadly. Um, so just make sure that you are studying and doing the homework on your own, and that's the best way for you to learn the material, really. Late policy. Um, just don't disturb the lecture. Uh, makeup policy. Okay. Uh, I want to. I'm going to change this section here um, to reflect what the real makeup policy is. If there's anything COVID related, I'm going to be completely understanding you know, within reason, okay? So like, say you have to quarantine or whatever and you have two weeks of like being sick and then you're like so far behind, I will work with you, okay? You'll have, you know, multiple weeks, okay, to redo everything and get stuff to me, okay? I'm gonna be very understanding of anything having to do with quarantine or, you know, hopefully nobody gets the virus, but inevitably people will get sick. So if you get sick, just know that I've got your back. Otherwise, unless you have some kind of excused absence, uh, I'm. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna not give you a makeup assessment according to the syllabus. If you have an excused absence that's not COVID related, 48 hours is generally my rule. Okay, statement of inclusivity. Uh, we refuse to compromise the ideals and so on and so forth. Uh, I've taken this pledge, I've gone to this website, I've signed my name. I think it's really important that the classroom is an equitable and an equal space for everybody so that everybody can get the education that they want. That's about all I have to say about that. Okay, getting to the actual class stuff. Assignments, homework. You're gonna have homework on Wiley Plus. It'll probably be weekly or maybe it'll be bi-weekly. I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out as I go. Um, but basically there will be a thing that you go to on that website, you'll click on the homework assignment and you'll have like however many questions and each question will have like a certain number of attempts that you can put through and uh, once you put through too many attempts then it'll lock you out and you won't get points for that problem. Um, it's basically like any other online homework that you've ever done. Has anybody never done online homework? Raise your hand high if you've never done online homework. Okay, so everybody should be familiar with it. Um, exams. Okay, there's going to be three exams in addition to the final. Okay, so the way that I'm going to give you the exams is they're going to be a... Uh, actually, I shouldn't say this just yet. I'm going to say that the structure of the exams is... TBD. Um, I may choose to give them through Wiley Plus, although I don't really like that option. Probably what I'll do instead is I'll give you the day off from class and I will post my exam online and you'll have a certain amount of time to complete it and then scan your solution and send it to me. That's probably what I'll do. Any questions about homework or exams. Okay, final exam is cumulative. Uh, it'll also be, it will be take home style. Um, I'll announce 
the structure and time allotted, et cetera, two weeks in advance, but know that your allotted time for the exam will at a bare minimum overlap the scheduled time that's scheduled by the university. So if you go to the university page, you can Google like U of SC finals schedule and it'll pop up with like, based on your class time, when your final is supposed to take place. So I'll schedule the final to overlap that time, which I think is uh, 9 a.m. on December 9th. So probably I'll give you like all day on December 9th or something like that. Okay, uh, grading. Uh, if you get 100 to 90%, you get an A. Next 10% is a B, so on and so forth. Um, you know, one thing I should mention is I do sometimes give extra credit assignments. Um, they're usually, you know, like I'll give a particularly difficult problem or something like that, and I'll say, if you can solve this, with or without help and show it to me and explain the solution and I'll give you some extra credit or something like that. So I don't always give extra credit, but I usually have a couple opportunities throughout the semester. Uh, here are some useful websites. So if you go to the Blackboard page and open up this syllabus, you'll be able to actually click these hyperlinks and uh, they'll send you to these places. So Blackboard, obviously. Uh, Wolfram Alpha is useful for like looking at graphs of functions and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about Wolfram Alpha. Um, then this is the link to the YouTube channel. And yeah. Okay, so if you need help passing the class, say you're struggling with some of the material, what should you do? First of all, come talk to me. Uh, or send me an email, uh, attend my virtual office hours. You can attend the MTC, they have hours every single day where you can connect to the Blackboard and some nice other PhD student will help you um, learn the material. So that's a super awesome resource where you get free tutoring from PhD candidates. So they know what they're doing. They know what they're talking about. They will be able to help you uh, with just about anything that you need from, from this class. Uh, there's also the Student Success Center. So if you contact these people, what they can do is, uh, well, what I should say is that the people in LeCant 105, which actually is not in LeCant 105, it's online right now, the Tutoring Center, they can help you with your math problems. The Student Success Center, they can help you with your studying problems. So if you just need help cultivating good study habits, those are the people to talk to. Uh, and they have all sorts of like useful advice about like uh, setting up your space so that you can be productive or uh, you know studying with a group so that you feel more accountable, you know, and that's that sort of advice on like study tips. Okay, important dates, uh, August 26th, that's this coming uh, something, sometime in next week. I think it's Wednesday. That's the last day to drop a class without a W. So if you don't know what a W is because you're a first time college student, it shows up on your transcript as you withdrawed from the class. So if I'm an employer and I see your transcript and for some reason I care about your transcript, uh, then I would be able to see, aha, uh -huh, you withdrew from Math 20, 122 uh, back in 2020. Why is that? Uh, you know, but a W is not really a big deal. What is a big deal is a WF. It's basically like having an F on your transcript. And it says that you withdrew uh, too late into the class. So you had gone too far in and we, we couldn't we couldn't reconcile your leaving the class without giving you some kind of punishment or something like that. I don't know why, it, why people do WFs, but they do, and that's the date that they're gonna do it to you. So if you think you're failing on, on like November 1st, and you think there's no way that I'm gonna be able to pass this class, you should withdraw before this day. That's basically my advice. 
That being said, I don't think I've had any student so far that was too far gone that they couldn't come back. And I've had students come back from pretty desperate situations in the past. So I recommend that you email me and I'll give you my honest advice on whether you should drop the class or stay in it. Okay, and then this is just the schedule. Uh, it says that we're going to do a bunch of math and we're going to do it more or less in order. Except for, for some reason, we do six chapter 6 before we do this section of chapter 5. I have no idea why it's like that. I don't make the rules. I just follow the schedule. And the last important date is the final comprehensive exam, 9 a.m. on December 9th. Okay, I've made it through the syllabus. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions about any part of the syllabus? Yes. Um, so they said that if we go home for Thanksgiving break, that they want us to stay through, like stay home until like uh, the next semester starts? That's right. So how would our final, is the final online? Yes, exactly. So let me explain what I mean by a take-home final. A take-home final is a, I'll post a PDF on Blackboard of your final exam. What you'll do is you'll either print it out or you'll fill out your answers on loose leaf paper and then you'll take your phone and you'll use like a scanning app to scan it, turn it into a PDF, and then you'll post it on Blackboard so that I can see it. That's how the rest of your exams are going to work as well, by the way. Did I answer your question fully? Good question, thank you. Any other questions? No need to be shy. Does anybody have anything that they feel like should have been on the syllabus that they didn't see? OK, then we can start. What, uh, what time is it? OK, I got it's 10.15, so I've got 40 minutes. All right, we're going to start math now. So everybody, if you want to take notes, take out your notebook now. Okay, so uh, for future reference, this is how I'm going to be doing my uh, notes. So what I'm going to have is a problem set, and I'll have usually every other page blank, and uh, on the other pages I'll do some scratch work or some definitions and that sort of thing. Um, and then on the problem pages, sometimes I'll have you guys work on the problem for a little bit first, and then we'll talk about it as a group. Um, usually I would have people do group work and, uh, you know, have people putting their desks together and w working collaboratively. We're not going to be doing that this semester for obvious reasons, um, which is kind of unfortunate actually, but I will try to have some parts where I'll have you work on stuff for a little bit and then, you know, maybe I'll ask for a brave soul to tell me what they thought of the problem. Um, or something like that. So first of all, let's go ahead and start with this warm-up problem. Uh, you can, can you guys all read that, by the way, in the back? Is it clear enough? Okay, if you ever need me to like read something out or zoom in, just let me know and I'm happy to do so. So go ahead and try out problem A on your own without talking to anybody.
Okay, this would usually be the part where I would tell you to compare your paper with your neighbor's paper and your neighbor's neighbor's paper and all come to an agreement and, uh, you know, draw it up on the board or, or something like that. Um, but we're not going to do that. Um, for this problem, I guess I'm just going to draw for us as a team. And let's just first see if I can have anybody tell me where should my drawing start? Where should I first put my pencil? Can anybody tell me? The origin. The origin. The origin is this, uh, this part right here where our axes cross. So that is exactly where I'm going to start. Can you tell me why I'm going to start there? Go for gold. That's wrong. Wrong. Right. When we initially start, my height of my flag should be zero because it's on the ground. Okay. So that tells me that in terms of going up and down on the graph, in terms of this guy here, we should start down at the bottom because the flag is on the ground. And why do I start here in terms of left and right? Morning. Right, it's morning. So we tend to talk about the beginning of, the, of whatever's happening as time t equals zero. And as minutes or hours or days go by, t is going to increase. Okay? So what we do is we start here with... Uh... Wow, where did that come from? Okay. Um, we're going to start here with our origin. And then what's going to happen? We're going to be moving to the right because time flows forwards um, for most of us anyways. And as we move to the right, the flag is going to start going up, which means we're going to start going up. Okay, so let's see what happens in the end. Does it just say, comes out every morning to raise a flag? Okay, so first they start raising the flag, they go up, 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 and then the flag is at the top. And then the flag is going to be flying high all day, and then towards the end of the day, we're going to lower it down, 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 down. Okay? So this right here, this is time, let's call it T1. That's T with a subscript 1. At time T1, the flag reaches the top of the pole. Okay? So the way I should read this graph here is time going this direction and height going this direction. So as I move on along, move along, move along in time, the flag is going up, 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 up. And this right here, we can interpret as the maximum height of the flagpole, right? So once we get to the maximum height, we leave it up there all day. And then towards the end of the day, at uh, T2, we start lowering the flag. And then once we get to T3, and we're on the ground. Okay, people feel pretty good about that problem? Okay. It's just a quick warm up to get us back in the swing of things. Okay, so we're not going to do these two things. Um, what we are going to do is problem number one. And so let's talk about it as a group. So, can anybody give me an example of a function? that we encounter in everyday life. It doesn't have to be everyday, but just some kind of function that's out there in the world. Yes. Sure, that's a great example. So, uh, height of sun given time of day. That is a great example of a function encountered in everyday life. And if you were to write that function in function notation, if we call the height of the sun h, and we call the time of day t, then I want to write something like blank of blank. Can you tell me what the blanks would be? Yeah. 
Yes. So you're right that T is going to be in here, but what should go here should be the variable with which we express the output of our function. So the input of our function is time. What's the output? H. Is height of the sun, which we said is h. So women are going to put an h here. All right, what should the graph of this function look like? Any ideas? I think it's probably going to look pretty similar to our flag graph, right? Because initially it's going to be at height zero, and then it's going to rise, rise, rise into the top of the sky. Then it's going to fall, fall, fall till we hit sunset, right? In what way is it going to be different than this graph? Yeah, it's going to have more of a curve, right? This graph, if if our sun did what this graph is showing, then we would see the sun go up, 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 and then at noon it would chill out there for like five hours, and then after a while it would sink. But we don't see that happening. We see the sun going up, 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 and then continually going down, down, down. So our graph is going to look more or less like how you expect it to look. It's going to look something like this, okay? Where right here in red, is sunrise, and right here in red is sunset. Okay, any questions about uh, this awesome function which was given to us by, I don't remember your name exactly, Dylan. Okay, thank you Dylan for that fantastic example. And in the back your name is? Sam. Sam, Sam. thank you for helping us out with solving it. I'm gonna try to learn your names but Man, it's going to be hard with, with the masks to recognize you guys. But I will try very hard. I've been studying your responses to the blackboard and everything. So we'll see. Okay. Can somebody give me an example of something that's not a function? Seems more difficult to come up with something that's not a function than it is to come up with something that is a function. Yes? Temperature. Temperature based on? Time of day. Based on time of day. What do we think? Do we agree? Is this something that is, uh, could reasonably be approximated by a function? Or is this something that's not a function? Do we agree with, uh, oh, hang on, I don't remember your name. Your last name starts with a D, I know that. No, a B, Bavlish, and your first name, I don't remember. Anthony. Anthony, that's right, Anthony, not Tony. Does anybody agree with Anthony about this not being a function? Or disagree? Yes? I think that is a very good thought. Um, you know, I think it really depends on the day. So, in some sense, I think that these two things are related. Time of day and temperature are related. So, uh, in some sense, you know, we expect it, it's going to be hotter at noon than it is at 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. So that leads me to think that maybe it is a function, um, but we also, you know, a function should be consistent, right? And from one day to the next, temperature based on time of day may not be very consistent. So I would say that this is somewhere in an in-between case, and uh, I think we could make it more specific by saying temperature based on time of day on September 23rd, 2019. That is something that's more like a function because it's more specific and it's consistent. Okay, so let me scroll down here and uh, let's actually have the definition of a function. We all have an idea of what one is. 
but I'm going to go ahead and write down a more specific definition of a function. Okay, so a function is a rule that takes certain numbers of input and assigns to each input exactly one output. And this part about exactly one output is extremely important. Uh, if you guys have taken high school algebra, you might know about the vertical line test. The reason that the vertical line test can tell you whether something's a function or not is by checking whether each input has exactly one output. If you see something which looks like this, it doesn't pass the vertical line test because one of my inputs here, which would be my input is this guy in red, is getting two outputs, one up and one down. So it's not a function. Okay. This is our definition of what a function is. Okay, so this is an example of, of what's not a function, so I'll erase it. This is our definition of what a function is. So let me talk really quickly about why this guy sits in the in-between. If we, if we omit the September 23rd, 2019, it's not clear that every input gets exactly one output because it's not the same temperature at noon every single day, right? But it is the exact same temperature at noon on September 23rd, 2019, every single time we check. Does that make sense? OK. So we need exactly one output coming from every input. OK. So thank you for that example. Um, any questions about problem number two or about the definition of a function? Okay, well, let's move on to problem number three. Here we're actually given a function in, in so many words. And uh, we're supposed to determine the input and the output of this function. Okay, so they say the average height in inches h of a young peach tree in South Carolina in a given year is a function of r inches of cumulative rainfall since March number one. So first of all, if I want to write blank of blank, who wants to take a crack at how it should look? We have two variables here, h and r. So I've really just got two choices basically a coin flip. H of yeah, so should it be H of R or R of H? H of R. It should be H of R. Okay. So, somebody besides Sri want to tell me what the input of our function is? R. Yes, it's R. That's exactly right, both of you. So, the amount of rainfall R in inches is our input. Now, is there some way that I can remember looking at this right here? What's the input and what's the output of my function? The input is inside the parentheses. That's exactly what I was getting at. The input is inside the parentheses. Okay? So this is going to be our input and our output will be height. Okay? So the way you can kind of think about functions here is like is like this. Who here has been to the airport before? Okay? That's a lot of people. If you haven't been to the airport, they have this machine that takes the x-ray of your stuff. Do you know what that is? like with the conveyor belt and uh, it goes through and takes the, yeah, okay. It's the security machine, right? It's like this big box and your luggage goes in one side and your luggage comes out the other side, right? This is basically what a function is, okay? Here's our function. 
and the, the conveyor belt is going in this direction. So basically, a function has inputs and outputs, okay? And any of our inputs are going to be what's going in this side. Uh, no, not radius. What am I doing? Uh, this should be inches of rain. And what's coming out is going to be our height of our young peach tree, height of tree. OK, so I kind of like to visualize functions as like these boxes, which something goes in one side, and then something in the box transforms what we put in. And then it comes out the other side as something maybe completely different. OK, so not exactly like an airplane or like an airport machine. You know, usually you, you expect your same luggage to come out the other side that went in. Uh, but we can think of functions as being like these machines that we put something in and then something comes out. Okay, And uh, just to give you a little preview, we're going to have rules on what sorts of things can go in the front of our machine. And we're going to have a rule about what sorts of things we might get out the other side. Okay, Those, things, those concepts are going to be known as domain and range. Okay, so we're going to talk about those in a minute here. But first I want to talk about what a set is. Okay, so a set very loosely is a collection of numbers. Now what do I mean by a collection of numbers? I mean kind of like if you were to take a bucket and into my bucket, here's my bucket, I draw these little squigglies like this. I'm not very good at drawing them, but that's okay. And in my bucket, I'm going to hold some numbers. I'm going to put in the number 1, the number 7, and the number 77. And this is a set of numbers, OK? When I refer to a set, I'm referring to this entire thing, OK? So a set of numbers is a collection of numbers. It might be just three numbers, like we've got here. Or it might be a hundred numbers, or a million numbers, or it might hold an infinite number of numbers, which is kind of weird. The way we would draw that would be something like this. Let me, let me draw it with square brackets first. If I draw something like this, who knows what that means? Is that a set? It is a set. It's a collection of numbers. Which numbers are in the set? Can somebody tell me? One, and two. one and two are in there. Anything Every else? One Every single number between one and two. So what's going to be in here is going to be something like 1.576, 21, 19, 62. That number is in there. That's for sure. And every other number which is smaller than two and larger than one. And how do I know that one and two are included in the interval? Because it's the square brackets. This is called closed. Includes 1 and 2. This is how we draw it when it's open. This thing is a set of numbers. It includes every number ex between 1 and 2, excluding 1 and 2. So this is open. Excludes. 1 and 2. And if we had something like this, it's neither. We say it's not open and it's not closed. Yes? Uh, I don't need to be rude, but I thought class ended at 9.30. No class ends at 10.55. Uh, right. Correct. Class started at 9.40 and ends at 10.55. No, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is the 15 minutes. Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, then hour 15. Are you sure about that? Yes. Yeah. I thought so too. Oh. Because we have like one extra day, they cut it down like the minutes. So they're each like three hours in classes. Oh, ah, OK. <laughs> well, I sincerely apologize. I absolutely thought that we were supposed to go for 75 minutes. Turns out that wasn't the case. We'll pick this up next time. Uh, if you have any questions, email me. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> Yes, this will be posted online.